in the chess tournaments. That's a new program. Um, the Department of Human Services and their el uh, Medicaid eligibility. That is, a, that is a major, major accomplishment there. Heretofore, inmates were um, not eligible for Medicaid benefits upon incarceration. Um, what has happened subsequent to the town hall meeting is uh, the federal government has changed its approach. And now for the first 30 days, if the inmates had uh, Medicaid benefits, they will retain those benefits. Um, so that's a that's a major that's a major um, accomplishment in that regard as well. Director Brown, in um, in reading through the responses, those who would have descriptive responses to the education question would often list the opportunity to get trained in some practical skills that could translate to employment opportunities after the fact. And some of the respondents mentioned barber programs, other practical skills, and some mentioned GED programs for adults. To what extent has there been an expansion of those programs? Maybe this is something um, the Department of Employment Services would be involved in. I think the operative term is expansion. Um, we have worked very closely with our brother and sister agencies uh, to the point where we've toured other um, correctional facilities to see what uh, they have in place, particularly as it relates to barbering program. And I'm very pleased to say that um, we're well on our way to establishing a barbering program in the central detention facility. There's already such a program within the CTF, the central treatment facility, our other um, institution. But we've worked very closely. Do you want to elaborate? <coughs> I think just that just we're really trying not to recreate the wheel, but more say, okay, this is. we went out to the Prince George's Department of Corrections, saw what they had. They have a great program, really well recognized, and so we're trying to learn from them. What do they do? They back, I mean, they actually have a barber, they actually have a barbering shop set up in, in the Department of Corrections. So they've got a system where the, the men go in there, they, I mean, they practice on each other. It's, they actually have classroom time, I believe, and Patricia was there yes. as well. Mm -hmm. There's classroom instruction for the practicum, and then they complete 1,250 hours inside, and then the remainder of the hours to become certified is completed once they re are released. So we've reached out to the D.C. board, and um, we've made contact. The University of the District of Columbia already has a curriculum, and we've reached out to them to come in and so we can fast-track the entire program in the jail. We're looking at space now where we can actually set up the classroom and implement the program for the men. And then we were looking also for the women at the CTF, maybe expanding cosmetology. On How much side. time do uh, our neighbors uh, at the D.C. jail spend in the, any type of educational, or not any type, but I guess either a GED or being trained for a job, either one of those two? Well, it depends on the population, sir. Um, with our juveniles, all our juveniles uh, are... Uh, Right. Have but how many juveniles do we have? Um, we've had as many as 40. Uh, today's count, I believe, is 28. And how many adults? Um, the uh, About 1,900. Let's just focus on the adults for a second. How many, yes, uh, what do we do? What is the average uh, adult uh, neighbor at our D.C. jail do about getting educated? How, much, uh, how many hours a day can they spend in school? If they're at the CTF, and that's where we, we focus um, most of our treatment activities, then the exposure to education and GED is substantial there. What's the, wh why, why, would we, why do we only have them there? Maybe there's a good reason. I don't know. Yes, sir. Um, we, we have them at the, at the uh, detention facility, um, but not to the extent that we have them at the CTF. Because is there a the, good reason for that? Yes, sir. Th there's a difference in population. Um, the individuals at the central detention facility are transitioning to move to federal authority um, principally. Um, there are some sentence misdemeanors there. Those are the ones that will serve a sentence of a year or less. We concentrate on that population at the jail proper uh, in terms of the programming. But those that are transitioning out of the facility um, they have to volunteer. Oftentimes their mindset is not on programming. It's to get to the federal uh, facilities and start serving major sentences. 
Oh, and what about the treatment? I, I guess I just don't understand. What's the treat? What are the uh, neighbors in the treatment facility? What's the difference? Those are doing? those are individuals who are within 120 days of release into back into our community. So our concentration has they been. They come back from the from the federal system. Is that what you're saying? Well, they they've been they've been sentenced by our court right. for the most part. Um, sentenced misdemeanors who are serving sentences of less than a year, who are 120 days of release. And because they're coming back into our communities rather quickly, we try to make a concerted effort to ensure that they get the types of programs and services that will uh, lead to their success. And so, and so <clears throat> they'll get these for four months. And what type of programs are those? It, it has a... Um, a wide variety um, of the count today for example there are 829 uh, individuals in the uh, custody of the CTF um, 244 of them are on some form of work details to teach them a work ethic to teach them the value of work 150 of them are in group counseling of some sort psychotherapy counseling um, uh, for the most part. 345 of those inmates are in educational programs uh, pursuing GEDs and the like. Um, and uh, they remain... Yeah. Yes, Shouldn't sir. the goal for every, uh, of every one of our neighbors who comes out of the D.C. jail or the treatment facility, shouldn't the goal be to have them have a job when they come out? Absolutely, sir. How many have Absolutely. a job when they come out? Um, that would be... Um, Really, the, the um, assistance of our other uh, agencies coming into the jail and Do we know? helping. Do we know how many have a job when they come out? Um, we don't have those statistics, sir, but we can get them. On slide 12, there's a performance measure, percent of halfway house misdemeanors gained for the flight of time to What's that? Of that this is part of the statistic in the sense that individuals, usually sentenced misdemeanors again, who are eligible for halfway house placement are placed in those facilities. And there is an effort made to uh, secure employment for them. The other population that uh, occupies halfway houses are those uh, pretrial detainees who the courts direct their, um, themselves. But again, so we don't keep statistics on how many of our neighbors uh, are, uh, are are have a job at the time that they get out. No, sir. Is that information that you could gather and report? It is indeed. It is indeed. So I have a belief about how the government works. I believe that if no one is ever held accountable for something, then it'll never happen. It's a, so. You know, all, all the you know, everyone drives around the city like I do, and they run into all of our neighbors who you know coming out of the prison system. And the neighbors say, "I don't have any job." You know what I mean, but I'd love to have one. <clears throat> and um, and so you know, I think that everyone is working. But I think if you work without like a goal or an objective or a performance measure, I think you just anyway. I think you just kind of start. I think it's a lot of running through the motions. And, and I don't. I think if we don't even know how many we're placing, I think we're not going to do the job that the citizens expect us to do. So, how long would it take us to track this? Oh, we can start immediately to um, to start.